It's just all we're going to do is, again, first of all, we look at this and we say, if I want to find the cosine of one angle minus the other, which in this case we have 195, can be re-represented as 225 minus 30, we just need to understand what our u is and what our v. And now we need to understand, well, how can we evaluate for the cosine and sine of u and v? So I need to look at my unit circle, and I need to know, you know where is the angle uh, well, first of all, the angle is 30 degrees. It's right there. Now, the main important thing I want you guys to understand about this is it says u minus v. Therefore, this is 30 degrees. It's like this. Put them in parentheses. So it's not negative 30 degrees. We're not trying to find, we're not going to evaluate for negative 30. All right? We're evaluating for 30 degrees because it's u minus v. That means u is 225 and v is 30. Do you guys understand, see how the difference? It's u minus your v. Oh, OK. Anna. There goes Anna. Um, then we need to go ahead and picture out where is going to be 225. Well, we know halfway around a circle is 180 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. And so then to go to um, 225 is going to be an extra 45 degrees. Go down there. So that angle is going to be negative square root of 2 over 2, comma negative square root of 2 over 2. Whereas this angle is going to be the square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. All right. So now, all we're simply going to say is write in cosine of 225 minus 30 equals the cosine of 225 degrees times the cosine times the cosine of 30 degrees plus the sine of 225 degrees times the sine of 30 degrees. All right, and since we kind of already wrote in what each one of these points are, we just need to really evaluate for by using the x and y coordinate for each one. So the cosine of 225 degrees is going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 30 degrees is going to be the square root of 3 over 2, plus the sine of 225 degrees is going to be a negative square root of 2 over 2, and the sine of 30 degrees is going to be 1 half. So now, let's multiply across. So we get negative square root of 6 over 4, plus or minus the square root of 2 over 4. And again, what we notice is we can just factor out our common terms. So our factoring out our common terms is going to be a negative square root of 2 over 4, which is going to leave us with a square root of 3 plus 1. OK, and that's your final answer. Ta-da.